Hey everyone, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I am McKinley 412, and today we're going to be breaking down the six game early slate on DraftKings. We got two even slates uh, on the day, one in the afternoon for the East Coasters and one later on in the day. Uh, this one is, this video here is specifically for the early slate. We will have a separate video out for uh, the later slate, the seven gamer on DraftKings. Um, so make sure you go check out that video uh, as well. But for this slate here, uh, we only have one game that we have to worry about weather-wise, and that is the game in St. Louis uh, against the Cardinals and the Rockies. That's about a 40 to 50% chance of rain at the moment. Uh, it is the night before that I'm recording this. So things can change, um, but you always wanna make sure they're keeping up to date on the weather, also keeping up to the date on COVID related news as well. You never know when that positive test is gonna come through and the game gets postponed, even postponed after the slate locks, like if it is a later game or some other guys get taken out of the lineup. So let's just look at the pitchers right here. Overall, um, this is kind of a gross slate in my opinion. There's not too many standout plays um, in pitching or in batting that I'm absolutely in love with, uh, but you'll, you'll kind of see as I get talking here um, what I mean by that. Right up at the top, we have Max Scherzer, 10.3 uh, going up against the Yankees. Now, Scherzer's main issue so far this season has been the home run ball. Uh, I think the last video before this Miami game, it, it calculated out to 24% of Scherzer's hits against were a home run. Um, and, you know, I mean, it almost stayed the same against Miami, five hits against, and one of them was a home run. So he has a serious issue uh, with letting up the home run. But outside of that, he is able to mow some teams down. Now he's going against the Yankees, who are a scary lineup with the amount of pop that they can have. But they also strike out a lot, especially against Scherzer. If you look at some of the career stats, uh, now I'm not, I, I've said this before, I'm not a batter versus pitcher truther or anything. Um, but I think when it comes to like strikeouts, it's a little bit more accurate. And if you look through the Yankees lineup and their career versus Scherzer, Right now, Scherzer has a 37% strikeout rate against their, their roster. Uh, Stanton leads the charge. He has 21 at-bats against Scherzer and has struck out 10 times. 10 out of 21, he has a strikeout. Uh, Gary Sanchez, he's three for three in striking out against Scherzer in his three at-bats. Hicks, he's had five strikeouts and 13 at-bats. Gardner, uh, he has eight strikeouts and 19 at-bats, so 42%. Um, so these Yankees bats definitely have a terrible, terrible track record against Scherzer. Um, so if he can limit the long ball tomorrow uh, against those Yankees bats, uh, I think he's definitely in play as maybe the top option on the slate. Um, I do like one pitcher better point per dollar wise, uh, lower on though. Right below Scherzer, we have Tyler Glass now. You guys don't need me to tell you. Uh, he's, he's had a great start to the season. He's going up against Oakland, a team that he faced uh, about 10 days ago, put up 10 strikeouts on them, didn't allow a single run, uh, and had 35 DK points. He's got a great floor. Uh, the Oakland bats aren't the scariest right now. Um, so I think last now for his price, he, he's got a decent floor. He also has that ceiling game. Fine play, fine play. Berrios, this is the guy that I was talking about earlier. I think he is probably my favorite uh, point per dollar play on the entire slate. And here's why. Um, his strikeouts have, weren't there for th about three games, but forgetting those three games, he put up nine and eight. So now he's going up against uh, Detroit. And we all know that Detroit, they strike out the most in the entire league. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's go to StatCast here. If you got or uh, Baseball Savant, if you guys don't know this website, I highly recommend that you check it out. It, it's an incredible website, more data than you can even imagine. Um, it, it's just amazing. So this season, Barry Ost, his most pitched uh, type of pitch is his curveball, okay? He's throwing it 31% of the time, all right? He's, he's got 164 pitches of it. He's throwing it 31% of the time. On the curveball, batters are only hitting 156 off of him. Uh, swings is just related to how many times they swung related to the pitches, um, his swing percentage is what I mean. His whiff rate, that's how many times uh, batters, when they do swing, 
how many times they're completely missing the ball. It's not taking into account uh, weekly hit balls that just dribble to the pitcher. It's not taking account in the foul balls. It's just straight up, how many times do they swing and miss? It's having 43% of the time. For comparison, Clayton Kershaw's curveball is around a 30% whiff rate. So 43% is elite for sure. Uh, he's got a 47.8 strikeout percentage with it as well to go along with it. So not only are those stats elite, he's going up against Detroit, who strikes out the most in the entire league. And if you do a nice little refined search here, pitch type, curveball, what we were just talking about. The Tigers, uh, let's see how they've done against the curveball so far this season. 0-10, 2-8, 0-8, 3-7, 1-7, 1-6, all the way down the line. Detroit is a team against the curveball this season is hitting 153. Berrios, with his curveball, is opposing hitters are hitting 156 against him. And he has this crazy swinging strike rate and strikeout percentage with it. So I think Berrios is by far um, the best point per dollar play. I think Scherzer's a great play as well. And they're probably going to be my one-two. Um, especially in cash games, just because I think they have such high upside uh, to go along with the decent floor as well. Musgrove, uh, he had that no hitter earlier on in the season, and he had two other games that were pretty good. But lately, he, he's had some struggles. Obviously, he was going against stronger offenses in the Dodgers and in San Francisco, um, but he's facing those San Francisco bats again here. So at 9-1, uh, I say just move up $500 and or $200, $200, and just get Barrios. Way better matchup um, and, and just a way better play in general. Kluber, he's looking better. Uh, but again, you also have to pay attention to who these guys are facing. Uh, he's faced Baltimore and Detroit, and that's kind of where he's turned it around. Now he's going up against uh, a Washington team who... Um, is putting up a, a run clinic tonight. I think they're up to eight last time I checked tonight. Uh, so they're, they're hitting the ball well. They have Juan Soto back. Um, it does say he's day-to-day -day on DK right now, but he is back. He, he's uh, hitting third in the game tonight. Uh, so that offense definitely gets a serious boost when he's in the lineup. So Kluber at 8-7, I mean, you, you can make a case for him, but it's the same thing. He's within 600 of Barrios. Just just go up and get Barrios and find the 600 in the bat somewhere. Gossman says he's out. He, he's he's starting um, tomorrow. You can kind of see it here. Giants manager says that he is in line to start on Saturday's game. He was out uh, due to just side effects from the vaccine. He didn't actually have COVID. Uh, he wasn't actually sick, quote unquote. Um, but he, he was just having some side effects from that vaccine there. So he's back. He's got a serious price reduction from his last start. He's only 7.8K, um, but he is going to against, against uh, San Diego. And he did well against them. He had 23 points against them. Um, gone are the days where we were picking on Gascan Gossman. Um, he's just a different pitcher. His hits per nine against are way down. His strikeouts are up. His walk rate is down. His home rate home run percentage against is down. Uh, so he, he's just doing fine. Uh, he's not going to get lit up, I don't think. Uh, I, I think he's an interesting play here, um, especially for GPP with that ceiling that he does have. However, San Diego, they don't strike out often. So take it for what it is. Montas, not really too interested there. Martinez. <laughs> If you've been following these videos, you know that I hate Carlos Martinez as a pitcher. I, I don't think he's a great pitcher. Um, I love targeting him against, I love targeting the bats against him um, every single time he goes out there. So I can't believe I'm saying this. And it's going to come to a shock to a lot of you, but I think he's a decent play here. He's under 7K um, and he's going up against one of the worst, if not the worst statistical um, road offense in, in terms of, you know, offense created on the road. Um, one major concern, and, he, and he's done well here in his past few starts. You can see this. He's gone eight innings and pitched into the eighth inning um, before that. Your main concern with Martinez here is his strikeout rate has fallen off a cliff. 
13% strikeout rate this season. It was a 16% strikeout rate last season. Season before that, he was around like 25. Before that, he was like 24. So something has happened. He he just is not able to strike out anybody anymore. Um, he he, when you do that, you do run the risk of getting hit hard. Um, so there is some concern with him. I wouldn't be trusting him in cash at all. Um, but if you need the, some serious salary savings and you want to stack up some higher price bats, you you could make an argument that Martinez could be uh, in play here against a very weak uh, road offense in Colorado once they get away from Coors. Everybody else, I don't really have any interest in. Uh, Williams, uh, he, the home runs kind of creeped up on him last start, and we, we called that in the video um, last time out. Uh, we were high on Cincinnati. If you don't believe me, go check out the video. Um, but he allowed the most home runs in the entire league last season. So for him to come out and his first five starts allow just two home runs, it didn't seem to sit right. Uh, so then he was going up against Cincy, who in that small ballpark with all those power bats, uh, and it paid off well. Um, but yeah, nobody else really for pitcher. So loving Scherzer and what he can do um, against the Yankees. You just have to worry about his home run ball against those power bats. But if he can limit the home run ball, fantastic play. Glass now, very safe play. Uh, Barrios. I think he's my number one play um, just based on what I showed you guys with the pitch type that he's throwing the season and the pitch type that Detroit struggles against. They just match up perfectly for him to have a, a great game. Um, Musgrove, Kluber, Gossman. I'm not really focusing too hard on them, especially in cash. Uh, Musgrove and Kluber, just bump up to Barrios if you can. Looking at the bats, um, Minnesota is probably going to be a lot of people's top play here. Uh, they're going up against Jose Urania, who has had four straight quality starts. Um, seven innings pitched. Um, let's see if I can pull them up here for you guys. Four straight starts, uh, seven innings pitched, less two or fewer earned runs than all of them. Um, so he's he's turned the corner or something. I don't, I don't know what's going on because this is not the Jose Urania that I know. Um, but Minnesota, they do have some decent stats against right-handed pitching. Um, they are kind of middle of the table, but a little bit uh, higher half. Um, there's a, a decent offense. So, but one, one of the reasons I like Minnesota is that if they can get Urania out, earlier in the game, even like the fifth inning, which is very common for Urania. Like these seven inning starts for him is very out of the ordinary. Uh, so if Minnesota can chase Urania out a little bit early, they get to face that Detroit bullpen. A Detroit bullpen whose ERA is close to seven this season. Uh, home runs against, it is just through the roof. Um, their home run per nine is way higher than even the second worst team in the league. So. Minnesota, they have all those strong bats um, going up against the Detroit bullpen, hopefully for quite a few innings here that just can't stop anybody that allows the long ball all the time. Um, so Detroit, Minnesota is probably my favorite uh, stack on the, on the slate here. Everybody else, I mean, you can make a case for Chicago going up against Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh's throwing out Will Crow. Not a good pitcher. He's 5'3 for a reason but he's probably not going to go deep into the game. And then you get that Pittsburgh bullpen who statistically haven't been terrible uh, so far to start the season, but I could see Chicago being another popular option. One issue with Chicago is that they are pretty pricey. So if you're throwing in Max Scherzer and Jose Barrios, you're kind of strapped for cash. Uh, so you probably won't be able to stack up the guys who are priced 5'7", 5'7", 5'1", 5K uh, and really do anything with it. So I mean, for that matter, kind of same with Minnesota. Um, their price just as high. Look at that. They got, uh, man, can Buxton ever stay healthy? This is so frustrating. He's, he's so good. I just wish he could stay healthy. Um, but yeah, everybody else is, is pretty priced pretty high up there. And this is kind of what, where I go to. Everything is pretty gross with this slate. Um, like you're not going to be playing in cash, at least. You're not going to be targeting against Kluber with the Yanks. Or, sorry, you're not going to be targeting Scherzer as the Yankees. Uh, Kluber's pitched well lately. Washington can throw up a dud. 
Um, you don't want to play those Colorado bats on the road outside of Coors. You do have a rain concern as well. Um, Pittsburgh could be interesting. I mentioned earlier that Trevor Williams allowed the most home runs in the entire league last season. He allowed three in his last start. Uh, probably not too many people are going to be on the Pittsburgh bats here. Um, so looking at their pricing, you get a little bit cheaper discounts, um, four, five, four, three, four, one. But then after that, you're into the low threes, high twos. Um, so they can provide some serious value there for you. San Diego, San Fran, you got Musgrove and Glass now, or sorry, you got Musgrove and Gossman. I don't really want to target too many bats against those guys. And then you got Glass now. It's just, there, there's not many great hitting options to go with this slate. So I just kind of stick to your game plan, uh, pick a team who you really think can do well and just kind of go with it. There's, there's no real true one answer on this slate like there has been in other slates. So just kind of recap everything real quick for you. Uh, Max Scherzer, Berrios, probably my favorite two pitchers on the slate. Glass now is very safe as well. I'm not saying he's a bad play. He's going to be, he's probably just going to do just fine. Um, Musgrove, he struggled lately going up against a good San Francisco team so far this season. Uh, still throws me off saying that. Um, Kluber, Gossman, they're, they're all right as well. Everybody else I'm not really too interested in at all. Uh, you can make a case for Carlos Martinez, but those strikeouts are way down this season. So get concerned about that. As far as bats, Minnesota, Chicago, it's tough to fit them though with those uh, higher price pitching. Um, so, but Pittsburgh could make a, a decent value uh, stack as well. So good luck in your contest tonight. Uh, as always, hit that thumbs up button. We really do appreciate all those thumbs up that you guys are giving us. Uh, also, drop a comment below. Um, who do you guys like in, in the slate today? Uh, we Remember, we do have another video for the main slate coming up. Uh, so make sure you check out the main slate video as well. And uh, we'll see. We'll be back with another video on Sunday. So good luck in your contest today and see you in the next video.